महाराज अधिराज योगी राज नवाबे हिंद नवाबे अवध पधार रहे हैं यस यू आर राइट टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्पीक अबाउट द ग्रेट नवाब वाजिद अली शाह विदाउट हिम द हिस्ट्री ऑफ कथक इन लखनऊ वुड बी ऑलमोस्ट नथिंग लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड हाउ एंड वाई No other province or territory in British India had such bizarre history as that of Awadh or modern-day Lucknow. The region was fertile. It had tributary of Ganga and called Gomti, flowing through it at the head of the Hindu culture. Kashi or Banaras was nearby. By some accounts, Awadh or Awadh was a continuation of Ayodhya, the Hindu kingdom of Raja Dasratha. whose eldest son Rama married Sita the princess of Janakpur in the 4th century AD it was part of the great gupta empire by the late 8th century it had become part of the 16 mahajanapadas anga magda kasi kosla vajji malla chedi vamsa kuru panchala matsyar sursena aseka avanti gandhar kanoja In early 12th century Qutbuddin Aibak defeated the ruler of Kannauj and thus the Hindu hold ended and the Muslim hegemony began lasting till 19th century thus traditions born of many previous centuries amalgamated to become a new culture this was the ultimate test of two great cultures meeting and merging seamlessly Hindu and Islamic fusion at its best In the mid 16th century after succession of many small and big muslim dynasties the mughal took over under humayun and his illustrious son akbar made awadh a province or suba as part of the subedari system the mughals were great warriors but also developed a practical and first rate administration system akbar introduced the mansabdari system under which a mansab or district was given out for administration purposes to a mansabdar the subas or provinces came under the subedars and mansabs districts came under mansabdar this was actually the foundation of modern civil services the ias and allied till today work in district the same way 500 years ago much before british even came to india the genius of indian culture infused with the mughals had created the best administrative service in the world america then 500 years ago was still living in primitive culture in the 16th century unaware of an ex- unexposed to any developed civilization europe was living in medieval ages living in almost cave like quasi human habitat and in poverty ridden backward conditions india 500 years ago already had a thousand years of history and heritage behind by then the vedic age the golden age of the guptas cholas in south cheras pallavas in south and the empires by the 16th century had created many lasting monuments like ajanta elora kutub minar taj mahal and red fort it also had established and created an administration process for the whole country almost the size of europe it was in this period that the official name of ayodhya became awadh and today awadh is lucknow awadh was that time divided into five havelis sort of units or districts and these were faizabad gorakhpur gonda bhadaich near nepal border kherabad and lucknow today lucknow is the capital of uttar pradesh and not a shining example of any exceptional merit but lucknow was the most important citadel of culture in central india it boasted of fine architecture splendors art music poetry literature and dance 
But for this rich central kingdom, there would be no Kathak as it saved, nurtured, propagated and promoted the art form. It is in quotes of Nawabs of Lucknow <coughs> that the fine art of Thumri singing came about. It was thanks to the climate and culture of Muslim etiquette that a wandering minstrel lore of Katha form got stylized with courtly class and attributes. Lucknow is to North India in culture and dance terms what Tanjore was to Bharatanatyam in South. The British forever seeking to extend their area of influence subsequently assisted the rulers of Awadh to hang on to territory in dispute with formal rulers, created in no small measure by the clever and typical British policy of divide and rule, and indeed entered into alliance with the Nawabs, at whose court they placed a resident or agent of the Governor General whose sole task was to slowly fester problems that would give the British cause to annex the kingdom. The real change in relationship began in 1819 with an act that reflects little credit on the Honorable East India Company or, for that matter, on anyone else. It was in that year that Ghazuddin Haider, the then Nawab Wazir, desired the title dignity of kingship. He thus gave the British huge free fortune and licenses in addition to gold and diamonds and gemstones and thus bought a title from them. The British needed this money to fight the Marathas. Thus, Nawab Ghazidun Haider became the king of Awadh and crowned so in 1818. It was merely a title, not the substance of monarchy that he had bought or the British had conferred on him. His terms of engagement with the British remained the same. Thus, while for his subjects he remained a king, to the British he remained their vassal, at best on par with their authority, the resident. The beauty of this whole arrangement was that the British were granting the Nawab the possession and control of his own territories. This made the British realize how stupid local rulers were and they started a political conquest of India. All this while, it was through the East India Company that the British had economic control of India. With Battle of Plasse and then subjugation of Bengal, then Awadh, the political ambitions of the colonial traders shifted from being purely economic to political. It is stated that to show the Nawab turned king down, the British resident would walk only as many steps to meet the king as the king did, whereas normally a king would merely have to stand as a subject, walked or did curtsy to him. The British were past masters at mind games and having an impoverished country back home in England needed to collect money for the crown and has thus used its naval and military fleet to venture out to conquer new lands which much wealth and in India after South America to Spain was one such. Then China and rest of India ocean belt. The cunning British eyeing this central territory annexed Awadh in 1856. The 1857 mutiny was first outcome of that against the British rule and the story of First War of Independence is too well known as also represented in persona of Mangal Pandey. Satyajit Ray too made a film on the fortunes of this important province that became Uttar Pradesh with Lucknow as its capital. The film featured Amjad Khan as Wajid Ali Shah and Sayyid Jafri Mirza Sahib. Richard Attenborough was General Utram who finally schemed to annex the kingdom from Wajid Ali Shah, who he claimed was too busy singing and dancing in court and playing chess. It was called the Chess Players, Shatranj Ke Khiladi, and depicted the life and times of this richly cultured kingdom called Awadh by Britishers, who could not pronounce most Indian names easily, so made Awadh into Aud. It is the singing and dancing of Nawab Wajid Ali Shah that concerns us in this module. Thanks to him and his patronage, Kathak of Lucknow Gharana came about and has given to India such illustrious gurus as Bindadin, Achan, Lachu, Shambhu and Birju Maharaj. The Lucknow Gharana of Kathak arose mostly in reign of Asafadolla, 1175-98 and Wajid Ali Shah, who ruled from 1847 to 56. While his reign was short, only 11 years, due largely to the deceit of the British, his achievements were many. With their patronage, they developed away from Banaras and Bihar, Mathura and Punjab, a distinct style of Kathak, today known popularly as 
the Lucknow Gharana by accounts of British gazetteers and they have very good record book keeping and record keeping like the French. It is established that there were over 100 Kathakars in Banaras alone as per James Princip's 1825 census. Buchanan's survey of Bihar records 58 Kathak Kothas in main towns in the period 1807 to 1814. As a student of history, all of you here, these facts can be easily gleaned from archives and records. With Lucknow as center of kingdom, many reputed teachers like Prakashji, son of Ishwari Prasad, grandfather to Bindadin and Kalka Maharaj, moved to Handi and Allahabad to Lucknow. Lucknow attracted many talents from other parts and thus the court was decorated with many gems. His sons Durga Prasad and Thakur Prasad were both prominent dancers of the court and Durga Prasad also taught finer aspects of Kathak to the king himself. While Kalka Prasad had inborn gift of rhythm, his brother Bindadin had poetic leanings and mastery. Their combination was formidable and in Vajid Ali Shah found fruition. Bindadin was a great devotee of Krishna, hence his influence on Lucknow Kathak can be seen through this. Vajid Ali Shah was devoted to Ras and dressed up as Krishna and played role of Krishna in the court. Based on this, he created the operatic form Rahas. Rahas, a form of Kathak that Ras dovetailed with the Rahas part took off. His dancing was so intense and involved that offers he was mistaken for Krishna to whom Vajdhali Shah felt he himself belonged. This was a classic case of Indo-Islamic cultural fusion. These operas were performed in Kaisar Bagh, where an oblong shaped hall accommodated the king's favorites. He was also a literary giant having written scores of compositions and two lasting books, Najjo and Banni, both pertaining to Kathak technique and poetry. Several sketches details each stance, the position of Kathak body and in doing these treatises, the king also saved and shared with posterity the early evolutionary stages of Lucknow branch of Kathak. He also authored South Ul Mubarak. These books showed how the form evolved in courts and how teachers of repute came from far and helped the king document a style which was a synthesis of Hindu and Muslim cultures. These books were printed at his own press with his own seal. In Calcutta, where he lived in Matia Burj, after the British cunningly took away his throne and kingdom and deported him with an annual pension of mere 12 lakhs. These books were lithograph editions and each copy carries the personal seal of the king. Mohan Koka Dance Collection has a copy for posterity. In Bunny, names of important dancers of the period are mentioned like Peer Khan, a musician who taught the dancers like Kayam Khan, a dancer trained personally by the Nawab himself, Kalandar Baksh, who trained royal ladies of the court, and Haider Ali, Muhammad Hussain, and Ghulam Abbas were all dancers who took part in rahas and individual items. Wajid Ali Shah was himself very involved with all arts and is credited with the creation of Thumri, a form of music and poetry that can easily be used for dancing Kathak and singing. His pet name was Kaiser and he also created a Kaiser Bagh or palace for artistic pleasures. His Thumris were created under pen name of Kadar Pia. Under his reign, the famous Urdu theatrical work Indra Sabha was penned by Amanath Mia, 1815-58. Many such productions were patronized in Wajid Ali Shah's time and he was supportive of both art for elite performed in court and art for common men performed at large. Thus, under him, both Thumri, Darbari and Bazaar art flourished and he can truly be called the Medici of India. His works were bedrock of Thumri and Dadra, compositions and with ghazals. He was instrumental in shaping Kathak as he was practiced in the courts of the Mughals and today, Vajid Ali Shah can be labelled as the Bharat Ratna of Lucknow Kathak. Durga Prasad taught Nawab Vajid Ali Shah at whose court he was falling 
legendary incident or something like it may well have taken place. Durga Prasadji was in the service of the king from whom he received a pension to help with the upbringing of his children. Also in the king's service was a great Pakhavaj drummer Kodoi Singh who was jealous since his family did not share this privilege. When Kodoi Singh made his complaint known to Vajdali Shah, it was decided that the matter should be settled by a contest between the dancer and the Pakhavaji. If the latter were to win, he would, as requested, receive the dancer's pension. If not, he would forfeit his hands. Durga Prasadji became worried since he was getting old and he feared that his failure to win the contest would ultimately bring about the end of his family tradition. At this point, Durga Prasadji gifted seven-year-old son Bindadin Maharaj stepped in to beg his father to allow him to compete instead, saying, since all this is happening because of me, it should therefore be me who dances in the contest. Durga Prasadji finally agreed and in preparation for the contest, Bindadin immediately embarked on the rigorous practice of rhythmic footwork to the exclusion of all else. A month later, everyone gathered in the court in an atmosphere of tremendous excitement. The young Bindadin began dancing in quick tempo and Kodai Singh accompanied him accordingly. Neck and neck they danced and played for 12 hours. Neither had gained the upper hand. The king had become restless and hungry, but the court insisted that he not leave his throne even for a second. Bindadin suddenly doubled his tempo and continued relentlessly for the further four hours. He ultimately danced so quickly that his feet became a blur to the eye. Exhausted and confused, the Pakhavji lost track of the rhythm for a split second and committed an error. Bindadin had won. The line of Durga Prasadji had been saved. The king summoned Durga Prasadji and asked him to name his reward. Durga Prasadji merely said, I want nothing but that you spare the hands of Kodai Singh. His wish was granted, but the embarrassed Pakhavji disappeared from public view for quite some time thereafter, remaining in isolation, refusing all food until he nearly starved. Such was fierce pride of a musician in those times. The following anecdote illustrates Bindadin's imaginative approach. Vajid Ali Shah was holding court to a gathering of poets. One common diversion was for the king to suggest a particular scenario to which the poets would apply the reason it had come about. On this occasion, Vajid Ali Shah's tale was of a young woman who was found the day after a wedding to have the palm of her hand severely burnt. One poet suggested that in experience she had burnt her hand while preparing a light meal for her husband. Another said that she had burnt herself while lighting an oil lamp. All the other suggestions focused on the woman's practical inexperience and in some way or other. The young Bindadin Maharaj was then called upon for his interpretation and he began to improvise a verse and to dance it. The young woman is sitting expectantly on her bed awaiting her husband. She is prepared for a night of love and yet she is experiencing the mixed emotions of joy, fear and curiosity. At one and at the same time, her body experiences both desire and shame. The husband arrives. He begins to undress her, and out of sense of modesty, she quickly extinguishes the oil lamp by pressing her palm over the flame. The story goes that Bindadin was rewarded handsomely for his performance with precious jewels from an often excessively extravagant Wajid Ali Shah, who was himself an accomplished dancer. Indeed, it is said that the king's toes twitch rhythmically in his sleep and that as a boy he would tap his feet incessantly. He was apparently partly deaf in one ear because his exacerbated Urdu teacher once slapped him for tapping. Vajid Ali Shah choreographed many dance productions inside and outside the court and strongly promoted the Thumri vocal form which when incorporated into Kathak dance call for elaborate interpretations of the poetic content in order to highlight the multifarious meanings that could at one and same time be spiritual and erotic. In this way, the Abhinaya or expressive element in Kathak was encouraged and developed and the acknowledged master of the Thumri in dance was Bindadin Maharaj. When Vajid Ali Shah was a young boy, some astrologers warned his parents that he would become a yogi and advised them that the boy should be dressed up as a yogi on each birthday of his so as to counteract the effect of the evil stars. He established his famous Parikhana, a board of fairies, 
in which hundreds of beautiful and talented girls were taught music and dancing by expert teachers. These girls were called Sultan Pari, Maharuk Pari and so on. On each birthday, the Nawab would dress up as a yogi with saffron robes, ash smeared on his face and body, necklaces of pearls around his neck and a rosary in his hand and walked pompously into the court with two of his par paris dressed up as jogans. Gradually he made it into a spectacular pageant known as Jogiya Jashan in which all citizens of Lucknow could participate dressed as yogis irrespective of caste and creed. Later on when his favorite venue Kaisar Bagh Baradari was built, he began to stage his magnificent Rahes, a Persianized name for Ras Leela, full of sensuous poetry, his own lyrical composition and glamorous Kathak dances. Under Wajid Ali Shah's patronage, Kathak blossomed into fine art. He was not only a patron of music, dance, drama and poetry, but was himself a gifted composer. Devane Akhtar, Husne Akhtar contain his ghazals. He is said to have composed many new ragas and named them Jogi, Juhi, Shahapasand, etc. What with the grand pageantry of the Rahes, Jogiya Jashan, dance dramas and Kathak performances, Lucknow became the magnetic cultural center where the most reputed musicians, dancers and poets of the time flourished and enjoyed his patronage and hospitality. The art we see today, all of you, what we see by way of Kathak, was thanks to many influences that merged and meshed in the court of Nawab Wajid Ali Shah. And his early death, he was only 47 when he died in 1887, gave a death blow to the form because soon after him, the kingdom was totally under British rule and all dance and music suffered or was diluted. Much of the Kota culture that came was an aftermath of this when state artists had to fend for themselves and were left on the street after Wajid Ali Shah or even seek employment in other courts like Achan Maharaj went to Rampur court. Lachu Maharaj migrated to Bombay where he taught film stars like Vaida Rahman and Meena Kumari. Shambhu Maharaj alone remained in Lucknow until called to Delhi to join the Bhartikala Kendra. Now Biju Maharaj is the shining star of the Lucknow Gharana in Delhi.